this is the Provoke Prawn, and I recently built in the Montec King 95 in a variety of different ways to show you what's possible with it. I'm going to do a separate video on this, but here I wanted to show you a problem I had and how I fixed it with Signal RGB. So as you can see, the Montec King 95 is a nice looking case, one of those fish tank cases you can see from multiple angles, and you can really fill it up with fans to make it look nice. Montec was kind enough to send over a bunch of fans to work in there, including some 140mm reverse blade fans, which allow you to have inverted airflow so that you can put these on the bottom of the case for intake and a mix of 140 mil and 120 mil fans which i'm going to use for a wiring guide and a setup guide for the case and talk about more about those but i wanted to use the reverse blade fans on a 280 millimeter all-in-one cooler so this is an nzxt cooler so that i could get the fans to match throughout the case and therefore make the rgb shine and also just show off things from multiple angles that would end up looking nice. However, unfortunately, Montec hadn't sent quite enough fans to do this. So when I went about the initial build in this setup, I discovered that I then had a problem, which is that there's a gap at the bottom of the case. There's one fan missing because you can fit three 140 millimeter fans at the bottom. And also I could have done with more reverse blade fans than the standard flow, because as you can see, I've obviously got these standard ones face down, which doesn't look as nice. So I've now got this horrible gap at the bottom and maybe that's going to put people off. So I wanted to find a solution. One solution might have been abandoning fans on the bottom entirely and making uses of the SSD slash hard disk drive tray that you can mount on the bottom of the case. Although that's not really for me because I worry about the airflow that your GPUs they're not going to get. But it does show just how much storage is possible in this case. But more on that later on. No, instead I stripped the entire build apart and then rebuilt it again with this ASRock Live Mixer motherboard, which as you can see is particularly funky looking. And then I thought hard about what I could potentially do about this. And I realized that while I wanted to demo how you could also install a 360mm all-in-one cooler in here, in this case a Kraken cooler, I wanted to get rid of the standard fans that come with that and instead use the F120 RGB Duo fans. The reason being that these fans kind of look similar to the Montec fans that I'm using in that they've got that RGB ring around the outside. So the similarities between these might mean that I can get away with the aesthetic making it look fairly similar. Now obviously this might not be for most people because you're buying the NZXT cooler and then extra fans. You might as well just buy Montec fans to match across the build but because I happened to have this already I was basically making use of what I had and ending up with a fairly good build but with some problems now generally I wouldn't mix and match fans like this and I want to show you why in a second because obviously it's a bit problematic but as you can see they're kind of similar to the Montec fans in some ways and not so much in others so the Montec fans have the standard 5 volt RGB connection which means you can connect them directly up to your motherboard with ease for control and sync of the RGB lighting. I'm gonna have a separate wiring guide on these later. Also means that you can use RGB controllers like this thermal right, where you just plug it in the five volt cable into that, and then you can connect that directly to your motherboard so you can connect multiple fans to one controller and then control all the fans from your motherboard really easily. So I've done a separate video on that already. The NZXT fans like to be a bit difficult though with this proprietary RGB cable which you need an NZXT controller for and I completely forgot that temporarily which was a bit of a frustration because obviously all three of these duo fans then need to plug into this controller which needs a USB connection and SATA power but doesn't have any 5 volt connection so you can't then easily sync the RGB lighting from the NZXT fans and the Montec fans at the same time because the NZXT fans require NZXT's CAM software in order to work. However, doing this did mean that I then was able to free up the rest of the fans and reposition them in the case. So side mounting the 140 millimeter reverse blade fans on the back of the case here on this SSD tray at the rear which is an interesting look, I think, and adds to the airflow and the aesthetic, maybe. And for the bottom, I then used the 120 millimeter fans mounted downwards so that they'd pull cold air in from below and blow it onto the graphics card, which is obviously preferable to put in the SSD and hard disk drive cage there instead. And that meant that I was then able to fill it up a bit nicer. Now, the keen viewer may well have also observed 
that you can also take the side tray and put it on the front in this case so that you can actually have extra fans and choose between either glass or an airflow panel, which is pretty nice. And you can top mount a 360 millimeter radiator as I'm doing here. And that's what I want to demo all the different things that are possible with this case while also filling it up with as many fans as possible to demo that too. You can see once it's in, the fans maybe look close enough that I can get away with it in terms of the styling. And I ended up being pretty happy with it and how it came out and reasonably confident that I could get away with it and maybe people wouldn't complain. But it, once I turned it on, it was immediately obvious that the RGB was not going to sync. You can see all the Montec is syncing up nicely and even the ASRock motherboard lighting is kind of similar, but the NZXT one was stuck on white. I figured that maybe it was probably because I needed to install Windows, download Cam, and then see what I could do about that. But the problem there is that you can't get the two things to sync up with Cam software. I don't believe it's possible to do it. So now I'm stuck with three fans look different. Now, in theory, you could set it to a static color, as I've done here in the two different softwares. So in Polychrome Sync and in NZXT Cam, so they're all set to purple. But Signal RGB is another alternative. So if you don't know already, Signal RGB is a free download which allows you to apply RGB effects to the things in your case. And this actually works with NZXT's products and basically anything that's connected via 5 volt connection, which includes a lot of things. It worked with my keyboard, which I wasn't expecting, the graphics card, which as you can see also has matching RGB lighting, all the fans in the case, including the NZXT ones and the Montec fans. And you can download various different profiles and then just apply RGB lighting effects across the case. You can also use some that will sync with what's happening on the screen. And bear in mind, this is the free version of the app, which is really nice because it means that you can basically get synced lighting and solve the problem that I'd created and maybe get away with this. So if you do want to mix and match fans because you're trying to save money, then this is a possible option. However, that should come with one pretty strong caveat as it's not a perfect system. It has worked nicely with all the RGB things, but one of the things I noticed immediately when doing some benchmarks, and you may well spy if you're quick, what the problem is, is that the display on the all-in-one cooler was stuck. So as you can see, it's constantly reading 48 degrees in the CPU and 43 on the GPU when gaming and benchmarking, which isn't a bad temperature, but unfortunately the readouts are not working. And that's because Signal RGB requires NZXT's CAM software to be closed, which means that they're not interfering with each other. Makes sense, but what it does mean is that the display on the all-in-one cooler no longer works. Now this is obviously with an NZXT one, but it'll probably be the same with others. So if you have a AIO that has a display on it, like Corsair's LCD Elite Caplix, or Leon Lee's Galahad 2, you'll probably find that you then can't use the display, which would be fine if you just had a standard image on there. But if you'd like to use it like I do, where it gives you a readout of your temps so you can keep an eye on things all the time, then you might have problems. So yeah, I'll fix one issue, but I've now caused another one. A minor one, if you haven't got a display on your pump, that's not a problem, and you may well find this is a good solution. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. If you have, check out the links in the description and subscribe if you haven't already because I'm going to do a lot more content on this build in the near future. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.